Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom Israel. Mosai and Christ bless. Uh, here uh, today we're about to do a 15 minutes with the captain. Um, I'm Captain Gideon to my right. Officer Kamal. And today's topic is God doesn't hear you. Uh, we were raised in a Christian church like everybody. You pray God, God hears everybody. Let's see if that's biblical. Let's get straight to it. Give me um, Proverbs 28 verse 9. We're about to find out according to scripture, does God hear every single prayer that goes up? The book of Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law... Even his prayer shall be an abomination. You hear that, people? He that turneth his ear from, away from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be a, an abomination. So which means if you're not keeping no laws, you don't care about the Ten Commandments, all the other laws that's in the Bible, guess what? When you pray, God does not hear you. You, you understand what I'm saying? God does not hear you when you pray because that's a prerequisite for God to hear you. You must hear him first before he can hear you. It's like if you got a job and you're not doing nothing the boss tell you to do, now you go talk to him saying, hey, can I get a raise? He's going to be like, he's going to laugh you to scorn. Raise? Like, what the hell's wrong with you? I'm not even hearing you. Get out of here. Give me John 9, 31. Because a lot of churches teach that the Lord is done away with. Well, guess what? Your prayer has never been heard. Never, ever, ever, ever. Read. The book of John, chapter 9, verse 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. God heareth not who? God heareth not sinners. God heareth not sinners. Okay. Give me first John. Uh, oh, no. Finish it. Sorry. Finish that. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will. If him, any man be what? But if any man be a worshiper uh -huh. of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. You see that? God heareth not sinners. So we're going to dissect it. Give me what is sin. We're going to dissect it. Let's find out what is sin so you can understand why God does not hear sinners. 1 John 3 and 4. The book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. People? Sin is the transgression of the law. So when it says God does not hear sinners, it's people that's going against the law. Just like we read in Proverbs, right? Read. The book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin mm -hmm. transgresseth also the law. Mm -hmm. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the transgression of the law. Read. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. So he was manifested to take away our sin. How is he going to do that if you keep the law? But the scriptures say he hears who? The one that does his will. Correct? Give me Psalm 40 and 8. Let's find out what is the will of God. Will of God. Let's get, let's get that. The book of Psalms, chapter 40 and verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. So David found great delight in doing God's will. Read. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. What's within his heart? Thy law is within my thy heart. Thy law is within his heart. Okay? Give me wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 9. Because going to church, reading your Bible... That's all well and dandy, but that doesn't mean God is dealing with you because for God to deal with you, there's prerequisites you got to follow. Read that. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 9. Mm -hmm. For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto God. So the reason I read the scripture is because a lot of times people say God hate the sin but love the sinner. That's what Christianity teaches. God hate the sin but love the sinner. Read that again. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 9. Mm -hmm. For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto God. So the ungodly and his ungodliness, the sin and the sinner, God hate them both. They are both alike. Read. For that which now is... they are both alike. For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto God. Hateful unto God. 
hateful unto God. Give me um Proverbs, I mean sorry, Sirach chapter 12, verse 6. So if the sinner and his sinners both hateful unto God, right? Now you understand why God does not hate sinners, because God have no need for a sinful person. Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 12, verse 6. For the most high hateth sinners, and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly. You see that? God hates sinners and will pay vengeance unto the ungodly. So where do they get God hate the sin but love the sinner? Where do they get that from? It does not exist. You, what you're dealing with is people that wants to create their own way of living, that hate God's laws, and they don't want to. They don't want to do it. But they go. They go bending on their knees all day, pray. No, the Lord ain't hearing your prayers. All right, finish that. And keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. Keeping what? What? Against the mighty day of their punishment. Against the mighty day of their punishment. That's what's await. That's what awaits you when you keep disobeying God's laws, and you think you're gonna pray God, and God is hearing you, right? Give me uh, Proverbs 1, 20. Verse 20. <clears throat> Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. So wisdom is crying out all the time. We're in the street teaching. We're in the... Every city, every like almost every country, we teaching the word. So wisdom is in the street all day, crying out. Wisdom is what the law, statutes, and commandments that you find in the Bible, right? We are teaching everywhere, saying one thing: How long, you simple ones? Because once you don't adhere to the Bible, you a simpleton. So how long, you simple one? You're gonna you're gonna stay in your simplicity, and fools that delight in their scorning. Because a lot of time we teach, they're trying to make fun of us teaching in the street. You a fool for doing that because God is not mocked. Not at all. And fools hate knowledge, right? Give me Malachi 2 and 7. Let's find out what is knowledge. Because a lot of people don't understand. This Bible is a book, but many of us hate that book. Because why? We hate knowledge. The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. They should do what? They should seek the law at his mouth. So the priest's lips should be full of knowledge. Right? And the people should be seeking what? Out of his mouth. The law. So that means what? The knowledge that's in his mouth is what? The law. Because if you're not applying the laws of God, I don't care how many degrees you have. I don't care how well, uh, how educated you think you are. You are a fool and you are a dummy. Because without the knowledge of God, what does it profit you to have 25 doctorates? Because, you know, you go to certain people's office. You know, they got, uh, how you say, diplomas all over the world. And you bring one law to them, they're so high-minded, they don't want to hear what you got to say. No, that's a fool. An educated fool. Uh, go back to um, Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Stop. Turn you at my reproof. What, what, what's reproving you? The laws of God, because without the laws of God, you will know that you go, you're doing wrong. Like Paul said, I have not known sin unless the law has said that shall not cover it. You follow? So the law is what corrects you. You was a fornicator. The law said, hey, listen, don't be a fornicator. That's reproof, right? You was an adulterer. You read the law it says, uh, that shall not commit adultery. You was a covetous man. You read the the law said, that shall not cover it. Then those reproof now, if you care. You're going to change. If you don't care, you're going to continue down the wrong path. And you're going to be reserved unto what? Unto fire. Right? Read on. Read on. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called, mm -hmm. and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. Mm -hmm. I will also will laugh at your calamity I will mock when your fear cometh there's a day that God is going to laugh at you you never thought that would be possible because you know people say God is love God is love Um, mm -hmm. let me remind you of something God is love but God also have a temper and when he's pissed off let me give you an example of a time he was pissed off he was pissed off one time right because people got him pissed he killed everybody except one family that's love See, but you never known love like this before. 
that's your problem. Read. I will all oh, excuse me. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. See that God is gonna mock you when your fear cometh. Why? Because if you don't care for God, how can when you go into problems now? That's when you want to start praying. Too late. He's gonna laugh at you. He's like, <laughs> remember you didn't want to keep my laws. Guess what? Handle your biz now. Read. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They no, shall. Oh, they shall. They will call, and I, do, I will do what? But I will not answer. You hear that? You will call upon God, and He will not answer. And you be honest with yourself. How many prayers you sent up in the Christian church that never got answered? Because in my in my uh, understanding, in Christianity, they pray for that prosperity doctrine, right? You know how many broke Christian I know? You know, somewhere, somewhere, somehow, the only people that prosperity doctrine works for, for some reason, is the pastor. Because you're the, you, yeah, I could say dumbass. It's in the Bible. Your dumbass do what? You take um, all your money and give it to Pastor Porkchop. Okay? You take it all to your pastor, so guess what? The pro pastor prosper. But you, you ain't prospering. You pray, you pray. When the when pastor need money, he say pass the bucket. When you need money, he say pray and have faith, knowing that God is answering your prayers. Because he said when you call him, he will he will not hear you. God only hear those who what do his Father's will. Read. They shall seek me early, but mm -hmm. they shall not find me. Okay. For that they hated knowledge. But they hated what? They hated knowledge. This is why many of you guys will never find God. Because you hate knowledge. We read knowledge for you before. Malachi 2 and 7. It is the law. You hate God's laws. How can you hate God's laws, which is God's ways, and expect for him to love you back in return? Impossible. Read. And did not choose the fear of the Lord. And did not do what? And did not choose the fear of the Lord. And did not choose the fear of God. So if you don't have the fear of God, how do you expect for him to love you and hear you? But many of you might say, well, you know what? I did pray for a Benz and I got the Benz. I did pray for a house. I got the house. Let's go to Luke chapter 4. Let's see. If you're in a Christian church, if you're not keeping God's laws and everything you pray for, you get in it. Let's see how you get in it. All right. Luke 4 chapter 5. The book of Luke chapter 4 verse 5. And the devil. And who? And the devil. And who? And the devil. And the devil. Oh, yeah. The devil hear prayers. You're about to find out. Read. Taking him up into a high mountain, mm -hmm. showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. So the devil took Christ on a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms that was hit, that was dead and that's to come. In a blank of an eye. So that means what? Most high is giving the devil certain powers. Read. And the devil said unto him, mm -hmm. All this power will I give thee. All this power will I give you. What is the powers that pertain to this to this world and this kingdom? Rulership, kingship, treasures, whatever you want. All these powers of the world, I could give them to you. Read. And the glory of them. All the glory that comes with it. Women. The three. Like the bishop said, I think, the three Fs. Fame, female, and fortune. I give you all that glory because that's the glory of this world to be famous all the girls chasing you and have all the money in the world and then what you do with it drug sex and rock and roll read for that is delivered unto me that is what for that is delivered unto me that is delivered unto me it is delivered to him why God gave him the, that power read and to whomsoever I will I give it and to whomsoever I will I give it whoever he wants to give it to, he gives it to. So when you pray, this is who answer your prayers. Let's see how, though, he gives it to you. Read. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. If what? If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. So if you bow down the knee to the devil, all will be yours. But you say, I'm in Christianity. How do I bow down the my knees to the devil? Well, you celebrate Christmas. That's the devil. Easter, that's the devil. New Year's, that's the devil. Valentine's Day, that's the devil. And so forth and so on. You've never celebrated any other feast that's in the Bible. Ever. So how do you expect to get blessings? Give me Revelation um, 14 and 12. Revelation 14 and 12. The book of Revelations, chapter 14, verse 12. 
Here is the patience of the saints. Mm -hmm. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So you see, this is how you get salvation. A lot of you Christians, you have faith in Christ. Well, you have faith in Caesar, which is the false Christ. Mm -hmm. But technically speaking, uh, uh, you have the faith in Christ, but you don't keep the laws. The scripture said the patience of the saints is what? Here are they that keep the patience of the saints, that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So the patience of the saints is like you must have faith in Christ and keep the commandments. Only then God will heal you. With that, I say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.